rumors as we start off every week. Chris Jericho has been seen back in WCW as of house shows. Also, Steve Regal has also been seen back in WCW. Psycho Sid, uh, now Sid Vicious, World Championship Wrestling as well. We saw Sable there. She may not be staying there, but we did see her on Nitro in the front row. Shane Douglas negotiating with World Championship Wrestling instead of the WWF. July 5th, Nitro. Bret Hart will be on it, maybe to announce his retirement. We're not sure. Also, Dennis Rodman will be on the July 5th Nitro as well. Stone Cold Steve Austin, the new World Wrestling Federation champion. Jason Arndt is the newest member of the WWF's Mean Street Posse. Also, Sable was on the Roseanne and the Jay Leno show recently. Vince McMahon was on Good Morning America and Conan O'Brien. Also, Hollywood Hogan was on Larry King Live. And for the first time here on Joe's Hardcore Wrestling, old news, but to you fans, probably the King of the Ring results. First round, the Road Dog Jesse James beat China. X-Pac beat Hardcore Holly. Keen beat The Big Show in an upset. Also, Badass Billy Gunn beat Ken Shamrock. And then the semifinal round matches, Billy Gunn beat Keen and X-Pac beat The Road Dog. And to become King of the Ring, Billy Gunn defeated X-Pac, plus the Brood one-on-one -on -one with the Hardy Boys, Brood victorious. Also, The Undertaker defeated The Rock for the WWF Championship. The McMahons, Shane and Vince, defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Raven is headed to ECW or WCW, possibly. They gave him the option. Uh, he's not happy with his World Championship Wrestling contract. I'm sorry, he's headed to ECW or WWF. Also, July 18th, ECW pay-per-view. Possibly look for Vader back from Japan to take on Taz and the Road Warriors against the Dudley Boys. Ric Flair and Scott Steiner may retire due to back, leg, and other assorted injuries. And that's all the news we've got for you this week. At this time, we'd like to bring on the hardcore manager of hardcore champions from the Independence, ladies and gentlemen, Templeton Peck. How are you? Wonderful. Wonderful. Drove all the way uh, down here from Connecticut to be here with you today. And, uh, it's a little bit hot here for me. My uh, makeup might run, but besides that, I'm all right. I've got a list of questions for you this week. You know, list of questions. If the first one's how big is it, I'm not answering. <laughs> and we're going to start off this week. Who or what inspired you to join the sport of professional wrestling? Well, actually, this is uh, just a plug for a friend of mine. My buddy Jesse Sasso was, and I were uh, drinking and uh, drinking gin and tonics, of course. For all you kids out there, you take your vitamins, drink your gin and tonics, grow up to be just like me someday. But anyways, we were sitting there drinking a few, and uh, Eric Bischoff was on the screen, and my buddy told me, he said, you know, you can do it better than him. And, hell, I had to see if I could. So that's where I, that's where I got inspired by a friend and told me I could do it, and uh, here I am. I'm doing it. And how did you get involved in the wrestling business? Well, actually, I emailed about 30 different companies and uh, schools and whatnot and asked them about training, which is a, a must for all you kids out there throwing your ass, uh, asses around in the backyard leagues. Get some training so you don't break your necks. Um, but uh, I emailed about 30 companies. A few of them emailed me back, and uh, I ended up going down and training at UCW, and I've had some training since then. And where do you stand in uh, Unified Championship Wrestling at this point? Well, right now I stand on managing uh, Danny O'Hannon, which is the uh, UCW Cruiserweight and IWA Cruiserweight Champion. I'm also managing Tiny the Terrible, and I uh, was managing uh, Cold Front and Vertebraker. Vertebraker obviously uh, got kicked out of town the other day by uh, TJ Richter, that little pretty-faced pretty boy that he is. And uh, we'll see what happens there. I hope he comes back in uh, to Barton or somewhere, the Millennium or anywhere with a chair, bat, or whatever with TJ's name written right on it. But uh, for, for right now, I stand in UCW. I'm the, the only manager that matters there. I'm the only mind that matters in independent wrestling today. I'm the greatest wrestling manager alive. And, uh, you know, anywhere I go, I, bring, I shed sunlight and happiness upon all the fans. They all love me, love to throw things at me, but they love me nonetheless. Well, how many years pro you got here in the sport? Years? Knock the S off there, buddy. I got a year. A good eight months, nine months, ten months, twelve months, something like that. I don't know. And who did, who did you manage in that time? Well, who have I managed in that time? I've managed Dave Vicious for CCW. I've managed, um, well, I started off with uh, Lethal Paul Dazon, a uh, former partner of uh, PJ Walker, and Shane Simons. Um, I've managed um, Slick Wagner Brown. I've managed um, geez, Tiny the Terrible. I've managed... Danny O'Hannon, I've managed Vertebraker, I've managed the tag team of Cold Front, um, and there's a few other people I'm forgetting, but for different reasons. And do you have a certain goal in wrestling that you haven't achieved yet? Yeah, I, well, I have a goal in wrestling that I haven't achieved yet, to uh, work for ECW. That's, that's where uh, 
that's what the future of wrestling is, I believe. Um, I'm a fan, and uh, there's right now there's no use for uh, a guy that doesn't have uh, breast in uh, d uh, in WWF or WCW. So basically, I'm looking to uh, go uh, go the hardcore route and go over to Paulie's uh, wonderful promotion and see if I can help him out in any way possible. Well, you've mentioned some of the organizations you've worked for. What other ones have you worked for, aside from the uh, PLW, EWA, and UCW? Um, CCW, Connecticut Championship Wrestling. I'm going up to EWA in, uh, in Maine in uh, July. Um, I'm going to be working uh, for Tommy Jeanette's uh, shows out of New York and New Hampshire in July and uh, August and September. I'm right now working on, uh, in the process of getting my New York uh, license. So uh, once I get that, um, I'm in talks right now with uh, ECPW, um, USWF, and um, also NEW. And uh, I have to get my license before uh, um, they, they've both contact, they've all contacted me back. And now it's a matter of me getting my New York license and uh, talking again to them because they want proof of, uh, proof of my uh, training and whatnot. They don't believe in the hardcore manager of hardcore champions. They don't believe in the fact that... Uh, I'm the greatest manager of all time. I'm the only mind that matters. If you can win without me, go ahead. But if you can't get paid, you know, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense, baby. And that's what this business is all about. And that's what I'm here to prove. And who do you dislike the most in the uh, world of wrestling? Who I dislike the most? Dr. Heresy right now. Right there. That man. I have, he's he's hit me over the head with a clipboard. He's hoovy driven me, clotheslined me, giving me shots to the throat. Although I did get him back. The last show, even though he mashed that damn donut on my face, I uh, I got in a few good shots with a foreign object of some type. You know, I don't want to go into, you know, we don't like to use foreign objects. It's a bad thing, you know. But uh, when need be, we uh, put the boots to the back of the head and uh, throw down the metal object in the back of the head, too. And uh, he didn't get up after that, I'll tell you that much. And you said you've been in the business about a year now. Uh, any injuries? I noticed that... Uh, more and more my knees hurt, but besides that, uh, I got whipped with a steel chain across the back and I didn't get up the next day until about 7 o'clock. It might have had something to do with the fact that I was up drinking until 6.30 in the morning and carrying a 400-pound man home uh, because he was too intoxicated to uh, make his way home. Um, and he'll know who he is when he's watching. But besides, in, besides that, uh, I've messed up a few ties and a few good suits. And uh, broken a few good glasses. Besides, that's about it. And you said you have been on other talk shows involving newsletters. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, right now I'm on a, I'm on a show on a New York and Massachusetts called Indie Wrestling Spotlight. Um, a lot. I've been uh, the Indie Informer, um, which is the second largest online newsletter, is uh, doing an interview with me. Um, actually, tonight I have to get it back to him. And uh, the last person that they e that they interviewed was Steve Carino. Uh, from UC, uh, ECW, excuse me. Um, so that's a big thing for me. That's a big step in the right direction. Um, and like I said, you know, I've been talking to ECPW, USWF, and uh, NEW. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, hopefully good things for the future. That's about it. Plus any future plans in the sport of wrestling? Yeah, future plans to kick everybody's ass and make more money than anybody else. That's about it. Well, we hope to see you. In the near future, UCW, Power League, and just about every other independent organization. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the hardcore manager of Hardcore Champions, Templeton Peck. We thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. And at this time, we'd like to bring on, he is the owner of PLW Power League Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom. Thank you very much. Yes. Right here? Yes, sure. Oh, wonderful. A chair. Why am I holding the mic? You're the interview. Well, what brings you here on uh, Jules Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show? You asked me to. Yep, yep, that would, yeah, that would, okay. Well, anyways, uh, you are the owner of PLW. How, how many years has it been in existence? Uh, Power League Wrestling was started by a very good friend of mine in the wrestling business, Bob Evans, Brutal Bob, for you fans at home. Uh, Bob started it as, a, as actually a Bush League, as a backyard league, in uh, October, November, 91. And uh, since then, it's somewhat matured. I mean, it, there are some levels it still has to reach. Um, but hopefully, uh, with hard work, uh, we can uh, attain some more recognition. We're nationally reg uh, recognized uh, all over the, uh, the Internet. And by wonderful people like yourself having us on our show. Uh, also, Cody Boynes, his show out of Duxbury, Mass. 
Um, so pretty much, uh, well, we still have a lot more uh, to grow, a lot more growing, I should say. And for the fans here in the Rhode Island area who haven't uh, yet seen PLW, what's been going on over the, uh, I'd say, past two years, title changes, who holds uh, certain titles? Well, lately the biggest uh, news right now is what we're going to do with the world title. Uh, Lethal Paul is on the independent icon, if you will, uh, announced his retirement uh, as of May. Uh, he won the world title at our big event of the year, Power Fist 99, and then uh, returned the belt, claiming he doesn't want to hold it anymore. Um, he's got some family things he wants to take care of, uh, some past medical problems he doesn't want to come up again. Uh, so what we've decided to do is we've put the world title into a 24-man tournament with uh, various parts of the uh, tournament happening at various shows. Uh, we just had the first round of the tournament. Uh, 16 guys battle it out. It's down to eight. Plus, we have eight other guys who have buys, so they haven't gone in yet. So we have 16 gentlemen still left uh, vying for the world title. Okay. And how did your last uh, outside show go in uh, Pawtucket? Uh, I thought it went extremely well. Uh, the crowd was very into it, uh, and they asked us to come back. We should be back there in uh, August, some Saturday night in August, to be determined, uh, to run in conjunction with their uh, annual awards banquet and whatnot that they have for the Little League. Okay. And do you have any future plans for Power League? Uh, like I said, there are a lot of things we still have to take care of, a lot of uh, other uh, issues outside the ring, um, general stuff that any promotion has to take care of, really. Um, but uh, pretty much the same thing we've been doing, uh, trying to get shows all over Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, to help out the charities that we, we normally help out. And how did you get involved in the uh, wrestling business as a owner of an uh, organization or just getting into it? Well, back in about February of 92, uh, my good friend, Carlos Renas, a.k.a. Shane Simons, he, was, he happened to be watching the show on Public Access TV. And, uh, you know, he told me about it. We went to high school together. We were in high school at the time. And uh, he said it would be something we could go try to do. So he contacted Bob Evans and uh, myself, uh, Carlos, and Randy Menard, referee for us. He used to wrestle as well. All went down, and then we just got into it. Uh, Bob Evans uh, started to grow up, and he said, you know what, I can't do this backyard stuff anymore. So myself and Mark Amaral uh, decided to take over the uh, federation. Well, it's laughable to call it that at then. Um, and then from there, we just uh, just kept going. And also, uh, I guess, do you have a certain goal to bring Power League to a certain point here in the uh, world of wrestling? Well, I mean, it's it's obviously, I mean, it's hard to bring an indie up to uh, status. Uh, Paul Lee took. Uh, what is it, Eastern Championship Wrestling. Yeah. And um, with a lot of uh, good planning, I was able to bring it up now, and it's it's a viable a third biggie now. I don't even consider it independent because it's worldwide. Um, it's you know it's on commercial television every week, and they're running pay-per-views right now. Um, I, I To be honest with you, it's the wrestling business. It's, it's not the, something I want to do full-time. I don't mind doing it on the local level um, and, and doing it for charity shows and whatnot. Um, if it stays like this, it's fine. But like I said, there's other things that I like to like to get done. Uh, nothing big, but stuff I personally would like to see. And for the fans in the Rhode Island area, the Boston area, Franklin, Attleboro, and New York that watch Joe's Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of all those fans that watch the show, do you have any dates for uh, Power League Wrestling that will be coming up? I'd say anytime from now to September. Well, we're working on something for uh, the end of July down in the Middletown, Rhode Island area. Um, and we also have, like I said, the, the return date to the uh, Fairlawn Little League. They're in Pawtucket out of Smithfield Avenue. Um, that's going to be, again, some, it's going to be a Saturday night in October, a date to be announced. Um, and then we have a show in Manville, part of Lincoln, Rhode Island, at St. James Parish Center. Uh, it's August 29th, 4 o'clock bell time, su uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, at that show, we hope to crown uh, the new world champion. It just depends on uh, booking and whatnot. But hopefully that's what we're planning for. You'll see a new champion that day. And what's going on with your tag team division? Anything much going on there? Oh, the tag team division, it's, it's slow. I mean, every federation sees that. There are guys who outgrow wanting to be a tag, with a tag team member. Uh, they want to go on their own, go to singles titles. Um, right now, uh, Don Juan DeSanto is having some really good time in the, uh, the tournament in singles competition. Plus, I think, he, I think his mark is dead weight, but we're not going to do that. Um, but they are tag team champions. What happens with the belts, I don't know. Uh, Mark Amaral held, held a title years ago and decided to give it up to go to, a, go to for the New England title. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do with their tag team belts. But we also have we power. We have uh, the Knights of the Realm. Um, 
we also have New Era Pro, uh, a team of TJ Richter, and a newcomer to, to Power League, Suicidal Silva, who appeared on our show back on the 18th. Um, that, t that tag team is a very good tag team. Both guys are, are very young, uh, but they've been in the sport a while, and uh, that they should be very successful together, either as a tag team or as just as a stable. Well, we wish you the best of luck with uh, Power League Wrestling. It's come a long way. And uh, all you wrestling fans out there, make sure you come to PLW. Um, as soon as we get all the dates, we'll show them here on Joe's Hardcore Wrestling. Well, thanks a lot having you on the talk show. Lot, Hope to see you again. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, from the independents, at this time we'd like to bring, or well, from UCW, Sick and Twisted. How are you this evening? Okay. Big guy up there. Um, what brings you here to Joe's Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show? The reason why we're here is because Sick and Twisted may be new faces on the independent circuit in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, the New England areas, but we're ready to take the damn thing over now. Okay. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, who or what inspired you guys to get here in the uh, great world of wrestling, the wrestling business? I have my own inspiration. Those who think Gangrelin inspired me, he and I are friends. We have worked things out. Don't think I'm ripping him off. He and I are friends. We see eye to eye. What about yourself? Any comments on that? There's only one God in my world. He's a true living legend, Terry Funk. And how did you guys get into the wrestling business? How did you go about um, wrestling school or anything? I learned when I learned. I've been around for a long time. I paid my dues under crappy gimmicks that promoters gave me. This is the real mad dog, not some all-American running around under the name Kid Liberty. And do you guys have a goal in wrestling? Uh, that you have dominate the world. That is it. If gold happens to fall our way, then so be it. Same for you. He speaks for us as a team. Okay, and where do you guys stand in UCW Unified Championship Wrestling with a tag team division there? We're the best. We're they the can't stand up to us. I saw that little weasel Templeton Peck talking about cold front. We blew them out of the water. Dangerous Beauties, it's only a matter of time before those belts are ours. We're the number one contenders to the tag team titles. IWA, those titles are ours. I've been one half of just about every successful team that's come through and dominated. The Dogs of War, the Storm Brothers, the Freedom Force, but now Sick and Twisted is what it's all about. Well, there's another team on uh, one of our talk shows about a month back that uh, had some comments about you guys. I'm um, talking about the... Uh, the Express, that's uh, Bert Santino and Danny Ramirez, the Latin Express. Any comments about those guys? Well, it just seems to be that Bert's cr path crosses mine quite a bit. I just found out that Bert has managed to weasel his way into my title shot against Gino Martino this July 9th in Foxboroughs. I'm going to be facing Gino once again for the title of UCW Heavyweight Champion. And this time, with faith by my side, I will bring home the gold to sick and twisted and uh how many years pro for you guys here in the world of wrestling i'm only a rookie in the sport but i am already the mayhem world heavyweight champion i take what i want what about you mad dog just finished up my seventh year okay and uh how many titles have you guys held if any which are you looking to hold I don't pay attention to titles. I pay attention to bones broken, careers ended, and blood spilled. And if you guys can remember back uh, your pro debut match, do you remember who that was against back in the day? I choose not to remember anything before the time of this incarnation of the Mad Dog. And who do you guys dislike the most in the wrestling business? Family, you're going down. Trouble man. July 9th, I'm going to tear you apart. And uh, do you have a toughest opponent uh, over the span of your career? 
well, recently I've had trouble with Cajun, the Swamp Zombie, or whatever he calls himself. I'd say my toughest opponent lately would be Samu of the Head Shrinkers. I fought him in Pittsburgh in the NWA, and needless to say, there was a lot of blood spilled, mine and his partner's. And you said you're a rookie here in the sport. Uh, thus far, who is your toughest opponent, Ben, if anybody? I had a tough opponent yet. Of course not. And uh, any feuds going around with you guys, other than the uh, Dangerous Beauties? Dangerous Beauties are not anything that we worry about. It's a matter of time for them. Right now, our main concern is to disband and destroy the members of the family. That includes Gino Martino, the Trouble Man. TJ Rick. Exactly. They're all going down when we want them. And uh, who do you guys, if anybody, who do you guys look up to in the uh, wrestling business? Personally, I look up to the Prince Ivan Zangveen, especially when I'm seated because he's a very tall individual. <laughs> and he looks up to you. Is there anybody that you look up to? The Mad Dog. He has so much to teach and I have so much to learn. Okay. And also a dream match. Any dream match, uh, any organization that you guys would be willing to step in tag team action against? Well, I believe that there is a few tag teams running around that could be cleansed. Cleanse. Any of those makeshift teams that are claiming to dominate. We won't name names, but we could take anybody at any time. It's simply a matter of whether faith desires it. And over the span of your career, which injuries have you held? Injuries? No one has injured me yet, nor will they ever injure me. Let's talk about injuring other people. Ask Derek Destiny what it's like to be state. <laughs> and do you have any future plans for the Dangerous Beauties? Their utter and total destruction. Okay, and do you guys have a finishing maneuver that you uh, finish your opponents off with? Whatever gets the job done. This seems to work great as a finishing maneuver. Give me one of these right in the head. <laughs> a barbed wire baseball bat, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we thank you guys for coming out here on Joe's Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show. It was your pleasure. Yes, it, it was my pleasure. And we hope to see you back here on Joe's Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show. We thank you guys for coming on. Catch these great athletes. Unified Championship Wrestling. Tag Team Action. And at this time, we'd like to bring on from YPW, Yankee Pro Wrestling, Lucian Bagwell. What's going on, Lucian? Uh, what brings you here? Joe's High Co Wrestling Talk Show, what brings you here? What brings me here? Just the competition, bro. And how's it going with Yankee Pro Wrestling? Good. Me and my partner, uh, Mark Chambers, are the tag champs right now. Um, we defended them against pretty much everybody out there, and nobody's beat us yet. And as a wrestler, how did you get involved in the wrestling business? It's a family thing. I've been doing it since I was like eight years old, so it's kind of just progressed from there. And is there anybody or that inspired you to get in the wrestling business? Um, not really. It's just something I've been doing since I can barely walk. And do you guys have a finishing maneuver uh, take care of business? Uh, I use the Blockbuster, which is only done by one other person in the pros, and uh, he's actually the one that showed it to me how to do it, and that's what we use. Okay. And uh, how many years pro here in the sport of wrestling? This is my first year. And any injuries so far? Um, I've had some rib injuries, a few pulled muscles, an elbow injury. Um, that's about it, nothing major. And uh, are you looking to hold any titles in the near future? Well, right now we get the tag titles. Uh, the heavyweight title would be nice. But uh, as long as me and Mark are getting along and doing good, we'll stay with the tag titles for now. And is there a certain goal you have in here in the sport of wrestling? Go to one of the big two feds. Is there one you'd like to uh, go to more than the other? Um, not really. The competition's good in both of them. And the past year that you've been in Yankee Pro Wrestling, who is your toughest opponent, Ben? Tag team division or singles? It's got to be Brickhouse Baker. That guy's just tough as leather. And is there somebody you dislike the most in the sport of wrestling? Not really. We dislike everybody about the same. Do you have any future plans, uh, Yankee Pro Wrestling or anywhere in wrestling? Uh, like I said, maybe hold the heavyweight title soon within the next year. Okay. And uh, who do you look up to, if anybody, in the uh, wrestling business? Nobody in particular. Well, what about Yankee Pro Wrestling? You say that you are the tag team champions. What's going on with the tag team division? What other kind of tag teams are brewing in uh, Yankee? Well, you got Los Bandidos, 
the uh, the Puerto Rican connection. Um, we got the uh, the power company, Dave and Dean Powers. Um, we got Tex McCoy and his partner, uh, what's his name, the Rebel, the Southern Rebel. Uh, everybody's tagging up trying to get a shot at us now because nobody's beat us yet. And in the year that you have wrestled in Yankee Pro Wrestling, um, I guess what match pretty much felt the best? Who who did you look uh, good with? A lot of wrestling stars out there, Yankee Pro. It's about 40 stars. Uh, any match stick out in your head? Probably we won the tag titles that night. It was actually uh, Mark was out with an injury, so they uh, substituted Andy Jacks with me instead and actually won the titles with Andy against the, uh, the Banditos. And uh, are you feuding with the Banditos at this point? Not really. I mean, they're trying to tag up and get their titles back, but it's not going to happen. And is there a certain dream match you have here in uh, the world of wrestling? Any organization, any time? I'd like to get in the ring with Austin because he is one tough SOB. Okay. And uh, any feuds going around aside from the uh, tag team division? Any? Well, it's always the hardcore division. There's feuds all over the place. Different leagues are feuding with each other over them. And it's crazy. They're doing some crazy stuff. And also, uh, who was your pro debut match against, if you remember that? Um, it was a three-way tag. It was uh, me, Andy Jackson, and uh, the Boston Hardbody against uh, Los Banditos. Well, we thank you for coming out here on Joe's Hardcore Wrestling Talk Show, Lucian Bagwell. Thank you, Let's take you to some footage right now, UCW, Sick and Twisted. Also, some footage followed up right from Lucian Bagwell himself. And, of course, some footage of PLW. Let's take you to the footage right now. We'll see you wrestling fans at the matches.